Let's do another question where it's a lot, you know, a fair bit more complicated or a little bit more complicated where in general questions like this, you know, throw a lot of people off because they get really confused uh, for some reason. You know, it, it, does look a, it does look like a quadratic function, but embedded inside it, it's got something, it's got another function which is may, may or may not be a quadratic function, okay? You know, you could use the quadratic formula to solve this by saying whatever the box is, is equal to your quadratic formula. We're going to simplify it down a little bit because I don't want to constantly write down x minus 2 over x, right? What I'm going to do is, and again, that's one of the reasons you use the let statement, uh, to, you know, make life easier for yourself, right? You don't want to constantly write down, you know, a bigger expression than, uh, than you have to because every time you copy something down, um, and another point, every time you copy something down or look away from your piece of paper and you come back to it, uh, there's more probability of making errors, right? So what you want to do is simplify your expressions that you're working with as much as possible during, during the work, during the process. That way you eliminate simple human error involved in it, okay? So what we're going to do is, you know, let a different number, different letter equal this, right? Let's use uh, Q for example. Q is one of the ones that you use in general, or U, or Z, or T, whatever you want, right? Anything other than A, B, or C, because we already have A, and B, and C, and anything other than an X, because we already have an X. And Y in general is, is off limits, because Y is, uh, in mathematics, it's, it's, it, has the, it has the assumption that it's your F of X, okay? So we're gonna use Q. So we're going to say let, so in our original expression, wherever we see x minus 2 over x, we're going to substitute it with q. Simplifies our expression, right? Simplifies our equation. So now we've got negative 3q squared plus 5q plus 2, right? And this guy we can factor. Again, this is something that, uh, you know, you could factor using the four-step method. You could grab the negative 3, bring it over, it becomes negative 6. Two numbers that multiply to give you negative 6, and that to give you 5 is going to be positive 6 and negative 1. And you can use the four-step method and solve for this, right? We're going to use the quadratic formula. And right now, I'm sticking with, you know, numbers that factor fairly easily because I don't feel like bringing out the calculator and punching in the numbers, right? I don't feel like carrying over the root symbols, you know, working with the with the radicals left and right right because whenever you get something like that if you're solving for it they're either going to say you know solve to certain decimal places or give exact values for it if they say exact values what you have to do is keep everything in their root form in their irrational form but no decimals right if they ask you to round something up to a certain number of decimals then you're going to have to round things up to a certain number of decimals right now we're going to stay away from that because we're just learning the processes later on when we start uh, you know i'm going to go through a series or when we finish all the different factoring techniques we're going to go into you know we're going to do a whole bunch of complicated uh, problems and during that process we're going to get into stuff where you know you can't factor out simply right now this one we can right but we're still going to use a quadratic formula for this. You could use the four-step method and still use your substitution, your let statement, right? But since we're on the quadratic formula, let's use the quadratic formula. So what we're going to have is Q is equal to our quadratic formula. So negative B, five, our B is 5, right? If you want, you could write out your A, B, and C, right? Your A is negative 3, your B is 5, and your C is 2. And it's a good idea to do this just so you eliminate any, you know, human error or your mind playing tricks on you. So it's going to be negative b, which is going to be negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 5 squared, minus 4 times negative 3 times 2. All of it divided by 2a, which is 2 times negative 3. So right now what we're going to have is negative 5. So Q is going to be equal to, let's just solve this mentally, right? We've got negative 5 plus 7 is going to be 2 to the, oops, I forgot the negative here. Don't forget, it's negative 6 coming down, right? These types of mistakes cost a lot of marks during exams, okay? So you should always be 
you know, rechecking, scanning over your work, trying to eliminate these types of simple errors, right? So you got negative five plus seven, which is two. Two divided by negative six is going to be negative one over three, right? Two over six is a third and it's negative, right? So it's going to be negative one over three. That's our first answer for Q. The second answer is going to be negative five minus seven is negative 12. Negative 12 by, divided by negative six is two. So our two answers we got for solving this quadratic equation, right, is negative a third and two. Now we haven't finished this question yet because we weren't looking to solve for Q. Q is something that we introduced in, you know, in the algorithm, in the, in the process of solving this equation, right, to simplify our expression, right? We're trying to solve for X, right? Because this would say solve for X. So what we're gonna do is resubstitute X minus two over X for Q and solve for this. And these guys, we've talked about before when we're solving equations from series three. Hey, this is just cross multiplication, right? We've got one fraction equals to another fraction. So we're gonna grab the X, multiply it up here, grab the three, multiply it up here. So three, when it comes up here, multiplies both of them, so it becomes three X minus six. And this guy, X comes up, multiplies negative one, it's just negative X, right? Now, if you're solving this, so X is gonna be six divided by four, which is two over three. Oh, sorry, which is three over two, right? And that's one of our X values, right? What we're gonna do is solve this one now. Cross multiply, two is just two over one. So you're just gonna cross multiply this up. Cross multiply to one up, right? Fraction equals another fraction. So it's just gonna be x minus two is equal to two x. So your answer here is gonna be x is equal to negative two. And those are our answers for our original problem, for our original question, which was, you know, the expression that we had, you know, what was it? Uh, negative three bracket, x minus two, all, you know, over x, all square, blah, 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 right? Our original question was asking us to solve for the x value, right? Not to solve for q. Q was, again, something that we introduced into the process to make the expression simpler for us to solve. So what we did was use the let statement to simplify things for us. That way we could work with it, crunch, 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 get down to this level and then resubstitute whatever our let statement was for the x's and solve for the x's and get our answers to the original question okay now when you get the answers here uh you're not really done in general you could be done depending on the question that you're being asked in you know, in the exam, in, in the homework assignment, or, you know, if you're working somewhere, if you're, you know, if your work requires you to solve for quadratic equations, and there are, you know, jobs in real life that you get where you have to do this type of work, right? If they, in general, they're more complicated, you know, you run them through a computer and the computer spits out your answer, right? Or the process spits out your answer, your algorithm spits out your answer. Sometimes you have to do things manually, right? It's a pretty good idea to go through the process and solve for them to get to the, to get to the answers. Make sure, you know, to do a double check because if you're doing anything in real life, uh, if there's money on the line or if there's you know something else on the line that you you know you have to, you know your job depends on it or people's lives depends on it or whatever it is if you're building something you better be checking your solutions right checking your answers and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to check both these answers so what we got is that's our original expression, right? And these are our answers we got for the X. So what we're gonna do is check our answers, okay? And we've done a, some of the stuff uh, in series three, a checking solutions, right? So what we're gonna do is just plug in X is equal to negative two, we're gonna do this one. X is equal to negative two on the left-hand side of the equation to see if it equals the right-hand side of the equation. Now, for us right now, the question is easy. The right-hand of the equation is just zero. So our right-handed equation is just zero, right? Our left-handed equation is just going to be this guy with the x as equal to negative 2 subbed in. So what we're going to have is 
So our left-hand side of the equation is negative three. So what we're gonna do is just simplify this, crunch it to see if this side is equal to zero. If it is, then we know that answer is correct. So negative two minus plus two. So negative 12 plus 10 plus two, well, that's just zero. So right away, we got left-hand side of this equation, when you plug in x is equal to negative two is equal to zero, right-hand side of the equation is equal to zero. So this works out, so we know this answer is correct, okay? What we're gonna do is do it for this one as well. So I'm not gonna bother writing down uh, the original expression first because uh, this one's gonna take us a little bit longer because there's fractions already, and there's a nice little storm coming in, so it's gonna start raining soon, so I gotta zoom out of here so the camera doesn't get wet, okay? So we're checking to see if x is equal to 3 over 2, which is 1.5, works in our original expression, right? Should we stay with fractions? Let's use the decimals. So 3 over 2 is 1.5, right? So what we got right now is going to be negative... So this is going to be negative 3. 1.5 minus 2 is going to be 0.5. 0.5 divided by 1.5. Ah, oh, I should have stuck with fractions. Let's stick with fractions with this, okay? So... I made a mistake. Be careful with your mistakes. I know this isn't going to work out, but I made a mistake here, right? Because this isn't a half. That's 1.5 minus 2. It's negative a half. So this guy should be negative. That guy should be negative. That guy's negative. That guy's negative. And that guy's negative. So all of these become negative. Right? So what we have here is this is negative 5. I personally make a lot of mistakes when I'm doing these types of problems. So. Be careful with this, okay? So all of those should be negative. So what ends up being in the middle here is negative a third, right? So negative, this guy's positive. Negative one over three squared is one over nine. And you simplify this, it becomes negative three here. So it's a negative a third plus negative five over three plus two. Now these guys have the same common denominator and you can add these. So negative a third plus negative five, negative one plus negative five is negative six. So this becomes negative 6 over 3 plus 2 negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 plus 2 so this side is equal to 0 which is what we wanted we wanted the right side to be equal to 0 too so our check works out so our answer of x is equal to 3 over 2 is correct so both our answers work out through the check and you know, this is sort of a, a fairly complicated, not a fairly complicated, but a medium level question that you, you would end up getting um, when it comes to solving something in a quadratic formula and when it comes to checking it, because the checking requires a fair bit of number crunching as well. Okay, so, you know, this is uh, using the let statement to simplify questions for you, to simplify expressions for you to be able to crunch numbers and solve for your quadratic equations or solve for any type of equations, right? Because our original question was not a quadratic equation. We converted it into quadratic. It wasn't a quadratic polynomial. We converted it into quadratic polynomial. We solved it as a quadratic, and then we substituted back in what Q was for the X's, and then solved for the X value values there, right? Okay, hopefully this all made sense. Uh, there's a fair bit of stuff here and we will definitely use uh, substitution and the let statement a lot further when we get into, you know, factoring and graphing polynomials and solving for equations.